Hey everybody, welcome back. All right, so this is part four of the uh, LS swap into that 1976 C3 Corvette. So if this is your first time seeing any of these videos, go ahead, click on the playlist. It'll get you up to speed as far as what has transpired at this point. All right, so in the last video, we went ahead and installed the uh, 302-2 knockoff of the Holly oil pan. Went pretty well. And since then, I've gone ahead and uh, purchased the LS6 intake and a front accessory kit. And you may be wondering, well, that's not what the original plan was. I'll get to that in a minute. There's a good reason. Um, but anyway, this is a LS6 intake. Um, if you're doing something like this, uh, you can get an LS1 or an LS6 or an LS2 and whatever. But as far as direct bolt-ons to a 5.3, uh, an LS1 and an LS6 will drop right on. So I say that with a couple uh, uh, asterisks or uh, exclusions, right? But anyway, if you're wondering, there's the uh, the casting mark, 1257-3572. So this intake was 550 bucks, but again, it was complete. It was the intake, the rail, and the injectors. And the person that I bought it from said all the injectors were good. They flow tested them, uh, put new O-rings on them. So as soon as I received it, I pulled everything apart and I can verify, yeah, it looks like they did pull the uh, injectors out and it's got new O-rings on, so all that stuff looks good. So as far as fitment issues on a 5.3, uh, for the most part, it pretty much drops on with two exceptions, right? The first one is the steam port kit. So again, this is the one from the truck and I've been playing around with this for the last 10 or 15 minutes. And the problem is in the original config on the truck, um, the uh, that part of the intake wasn't there and that would actually hit the front of the intake. So, so for the last 10 minutes, I've actually been playing around with this, trying to bend it to get it to kind of conform where I can actually route a line underneath the throttle body. But it's at the point where I have a feeling if I try to tweak it anymore, it's going to break. So we're going to come up with a steam port kit. And I'm pretty sure ICT Billet makes one. So we're going to add that to the shopping list. So that's one issue. The second issue, and it's really not that big of a deal is actually the inlet for the fuel supply to the rail. So what's nice about these uh, intakes in the fuel rail, whether it's an LS1, LS2, or even on the LM7, the uh, the fuel rail can actually be flipped 180 degrees. So if you want the inlet to be on the passenger or on the driver, it's just a matter of taking it, spinning it, dropping it back down. So uh, the reason I put it on the passenger side is because that's where my fuel line is gonna be coming from, because I'm gonna, use the existing hard line that's on the car and basically we're going to make a hose using some AN, some AN fittings to basically hook up to the fuel rail. So in doing so, um, you know, all the injectors line up and everything else will just drop right in. So the only issue I had was uh, the inlet actually hit the top of the plug for the coil pack. So all I did was I just took a awl, I put it on there and I slowly bent it over and up. So it's gonna give me enough clearance, uh, I think for the most part at this point, to put in the adapter for the AN line and go from there and then just run the line over and out to the uh, the existing hard line on the car. So we should be pretty good on that. So other than those two issues, it dropped right on. Um, re no real issues on the back. So again, there's the oil pressure uh, sending unit. You got the cam sensor, then you get the uh, map sensor. No, that's a map sensor. Uh, manifold absolute pressure in the back. So uh, other than that, uh, worked pretty well. Um, so let's talk about the front accessories. So uh, my original plan was to use the original truck bracket and modify that and, and just relocate the alternator because of the height of it. Because if you don't, on a C3, you would, it would actually hit the hood. So my intent was to modify that and I got pretty close, but in the end I couldn't get it to work. And the reason why is I couldn't get the idler in a position to not interfere with the inlet of the water pump. And so the water pump on this, we actually went with an a, a LS3, right? And the reason why we changed the water pump because we changed the intake. So if, if you change the intake, what happens is the sweep or the bracket where the cable, the 
where the cable for the throttle cable mounts, it actually hits the neck on the truck pump. So we knew we had to swap that. So I ended up going with, with a uh, LS3 type water pump versus, a, versus an LS1. You can use an LS1 or an LS3. The reason why I went with an LS3 is because not only is it the correct offset or it lines up with the crank, right? And that's, a, that's the biggest thing is the offset and the backspacing with all your accessories. You know, it puts the inlet on the right hand side closer to the radiator and with an LS3, I don't have to worry about using spacers or shims or whatever you want to call them on the back of a block. So if you put, if you use an LS1 pump, it actually puts it closer to the block, and but then it's not lined up with the crank. So then you had to buy spacers, which then corrects the offset. I didn't want to deal with spacers, so that's why I went with an LS3. So because we're using the LS3, if I didn't already mention it, it screwed up the, where the location of the other was, and I couldn't get the routing one uh, to work. So. I gave up, I conceded, and I reached out to this company called LS Simple. Uh, they're down in Georgia, I think, and basically that's what they do. They make brackets for LS swaps. And one of the things they, they offer is, if you're doing an LS swap and you're using an engine from a truck, a 5.3, a 6, or a 6.2, um, it allows, you know, they make a kit that allows you to use the alternator and the power steering pump without reinvesting uh, more money into accessories that you don't need to buy, you already have them. So this kit basically bolts right on. It's made out of aluminum. It's constructed with spacers and bolts and everything else. It actually works very well. It's very simple to put on there. And for the last I don't know, 20 minutes, I've just been playing around with it, putting the mock-up on it. And I did, uh, I do have the power steering pulley on there right now. It's on there just temporarily and uh, just to check the belt routing. And, but eventually all this stuff is going to come off and then, uh, we're, you know, we're going to clean up the block. We'll probably paint it or whatever. And then we'll, we'll do our frontal assembly and we'll get everything squared away. That kit uh, to my door uh, with shipping was $275. But the, re the reason I conceded in buying that is because in reality... My investment on that is a hundred bucks and I'll tell you why, right? So when I bought that water pump, the LS3 water pump and it's an AC Delco one, I bought it off of Amazon and on Amazon, that pump can go anywhere from 180 to 380 bucks. You know, you gotta look for the best deal. But anyway, I read that pump for 180 bucks. So not only did they send me, <laughs> so Amazon sent me that pump and they also sent me Another pump, another LS3 water pump. So they sent me two, they only charged me for one. So in essence, I'm gonna send that water pump back to Amazon. I'm gonna get a credit for 180 bucks. So in reality, that's why this front bracket kit has cost me 100 bucks. So it was 275 minus $180 credit I'm gonna get from Amazon. So it's 90, 100 bucks, whatever works out to be. So for 100 bucks, Having uh, something that actually looks decent and doesn't look like a, a cob job on it, I think that's the uh, the correct way to go. And uh, I'm, I'm very happy with how it looks and, and how it mounts. So it's pretty solid, works out pretty well. So at this point, we're just about done with a mock-up. I have to go out and buy some gaskets and some miscellaneous stuff and get the uh, steam port kit and a couple other odds and ends. Uh, one last thing I have to do before this goes into the, the C3 is I have to modify the water pump. We have to get rid of these outlets for the heater core, well, for the heater hoses, because it's a known issue that they're gonna interfere with the, with the um, control arm in the car. So we're gonna have to modify those and then basically re relocate the outlet and the inlet. So not that big of a deal. I right, knew about that. So I have to order the tap, the taps for it, and the plugs, and hopefully I can source that stuff locally. But other than that, uh, hopefully it's my intent to have this in the car the week of Halloween. I'm on uh, vacation. We'll see how that goes. I'm gonna take my time on it. Again, I'm in no rush. My intent is to have this thing ready in in April of 2024. But as far as budget, again, these are some of the major things. 
in no way, shape, or means does this include everything, but this is kind of like the biggest ticket items. So again, the engine was 600 bucks, so we're gonna be in it for another 440 just for the fuel pump, and then the intake was 550. The water pump was zero, so we're saving some money on that. The uh, the accessory mount that was 275, so we should we should actually call it 100 bucks. Transit after is gonna be 12 bucks. Uh, we're gonna use the, ex the existing exhaust manifolds, so that's zero. That doesn't include the cost to actually made it to the existing exhaust in the car. There'll still be an expense on that. Radiators and electric fan, again, we're gonna try to use a radiator, but put some electric fans in there for like 100 bucks. Gauges, we're gonna buy adapters for 40 bucks. Still undecided on, on the harness. Uh, oil panel was 180 bucks. And the adapter plates from the ICT billet for the actual undermounts were, were, were uh, 50 bucks. So I don't know where we're at. I'll have to tally it up. But my goal is to be all in under 3,500 bucks. I think we're going to be pretty close. So, but we'll see. So, but again, I still have, you know, there's some other costs on here. Like we, like we haven't accounted for, like I still got to do the programming of the ECU. I already know what I'm going to do with that, but that's going to be like a hundred bucks. So. All right, if there's any thoughts, questions, concerns, whatever they may be, go ahead and leave them in the comments box. And if this helps you out in an LS swap in a C3 Corvette, that's awesome. Again, that's why we're making these videos, just to give it every an idea of what they're gonna be getting into. And I'm gonna learn along with everybody else. So I'm sure we're gonna run into, into some roadblocks in the process, but again, that's why we do this stuff. If it was easy, area we'd be doing it, so. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you later, bye.